Ah, the chief. Chief, finally. Where are you, mate? You're late. It's EDFL Premier Division Grand Final. Greenvale versus Aberfeldy. I'm that excited, but Chief, you are running late, mate. Where are you? Let's get it on. I have been waiting two years for this comeback, Chief. I'm that excited, mate. Come on, Chief. Let's get this show up by running the best EDFL TV show we're going to have for the 2015 season, Chief. I promise, Chief. I'm very excited, mate. Can't wait, Chief. See you soon, Chief. everyone, my name's Claire Varley and welcome to this special grand final edition of EDFL Web TV. We're here today at Windy Hill, we're at the weekend, there were two big grand finals and Essendon Duda Stars and Hadfield walked away with premiumships and promotions. In this week's edition of EDFL Web TV we'll be looking at highlights and also interviews from those two grand finals from the weekend and then Adam Sarakoglu will look ahead to the Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division grand final with some help from a special old friend of EDFL Web TV. TV. But first up, let's have a look at that Strathmore Community Bank Division 2 Grand Final between Jakarta and Hadfield. We're here in the home rooms at Windsor Hill, Adam Russell, and uh, Hadfield was calling these particular rooms home on Saturday for the big one against Jakarta, and at about 5pm it was rocking because the Hawks had just won their first flag in 26 years. Hadfield, they're back into Division 1, Chief, after being relegated last season. They had a really good season in Div 2, one they'll remember fondly, just the one loss this season up against Roxford Park, but Jakarta gave them a run last time these two teams met. The Jacker, fairy tale story this season, what did you think of them? Yeah, look, uh, for the first 40 minutes, they were great. Uh, Jacob Austin kicked the goal pretty early in the game. We saw Chris Johnson kick one as well, and... You know, for the first 40 minutes, I really felt like that the fairy tale could last one more week, Adam. And um, unfortunately, they just fell away sort of midway through that second term. But uh, you could also argue that's him an accurate kicking from Hadfield and might have just kept him in it. Yeah, both teams brought such an attractive style of football early on. Chris Johnson obviously kicking that goal. But Sammy Saab was the guy that really stood out for me on the day. But his first quarter was good. He kicked it off for Hadfield, scored the two goals. And when we consider he might not have even played for Hadfield this season, it's such a good story for him. Yeah, it is. Uh, he only played the 10 games in the end. He went into the game with 44 and ended up with a half ton by the end of it. I wonder if uh, he was actually aiming for that. So well done to Sammy. And uh, as obviously, uh, yeah, sure, we might hear from Sammy a bit later on in the show, Adam. As, uh, he did kick six in the end. Uh, didn't kick any in the second term. Started with two, as you said. But uh, boy, there were, there were a number of contributors for Hadfield on the day. Yes, yeah, Sammy started. And the package might just consider themselves yes. pretty good contributors. Yes. But at half-time, Chief, it was 5-14 Hadfield to Jakarta 4-5. Inaccurate kicking. Is it going to be a, the story of Windy Hill for all these grand finals? At primary school end, we know how hard it is to kick, especially set shots. What do the teams need to do to, to, to uh, score goals? Yeah, look, I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do, to be honest. Uh, it seems as though if you want to kick goals at that end of the ground, then kick them on the run. It seems like the set, the, uh, set shot goal kicking was a, was a really, really hard thing to do for... Basically, anyone we've seen on Windsor Hill this year so far, there's something about the aerodynamics there, even at the Napier Street end as well, Adam. But uh, as we said, uh, Hadfield were really inaccurate. They were 5 at 14, 44 at half time, and because of that, they only led by 15 points. But uh, yeah, like I said, they had all the momentum, and therefore they were able to kick away in the third quarter. They certainly did the Premiership quarter, but Jakarta, they did really well just to keep themselves in the game. but... A lot of goals scored in that third quarter. It was three to Chicana, but Hadfield slotted the eight. Who were the really star, standout players for you in that third quarter that really broke the game open for the Hawks? Yeah, Sammy Sard again, he kicked three goals. Uh, we will get to Steve Vocali. Uh, he did kick one in the third quarter as well. Adam, your tip for best on ground. You predicted it on EDFL Web TV earlier in the week. He copped a bit of a knock late. We'll worry they might not be able to run out the game, but uh, he was okay post game and he walked away with two medals kicked some really really nice goals and just kept bobbing up around half forward he was really really good the uh, best on ground for division two grand final steve ocarly yeah he was someone that's really impressed me all season you look at the way he played on the grand final it's pretty much the way he's played all year probably a sneaky chance for the club's best and fairest as well he's such a good ball carrier yeah, another one, uh, obviously, Ferris Merry we need to discuss as well. He kicked a, he kicked a couple of goals, uh, both in the second term, and just his presence around the ruck, though, it seemed like Jakarta didn't know how to handle him 
obviously, and uh, he was such a massive presence and uh, quite dangerous across our forward as well. Yeah, certainly wasn't a day off for that Ferris, but uh, did really well. He was just left off a little bit off the ball and he was just taking a lot of intercept marks, getting the ball back inside forward 50 for Hadfield. And I think he set up a lot of their, their scoring shots, but as well as kicking two goals himself. Yeah, Josh Inzillo was uh, popping up here and there as well. I particularly like Josh Borg. He did a couple of nice things across half back. I thought the Nazra boys were okay. Uh, Matty Gray and Harry Walker as well. They just kept bobbing up as well and doing some really, really nice things. But uh, unfortunately for the Jacker, it was game over at three quarter time. That uh, score 13 20 to 7 7. It was basically party time for the Hawks and they made sure they enjoyed it in the final term. Yeah, that last quarter, it was great to see both teams playing some really good football and they just really enjoyed themselves, I think. Like, Chicana, even though they didn't get the win, the, their fans and the, even the players, the coaching staff, they're really optimistic about this year. It's been such a great story for them and it was, I think they can take a lot into next season. Yeah, they can. Uh, again, for the Jacker, I really like Bryce Kimmelitis. He did a couple of nice things, uh, kicked two goals and Again, was that presence. He was the one that was threatening to break the game open for mine. Was uh, Bryce Kimmelitis. He uh, finishes the year on 67 goals from his 19 games. Uh, two for Chris Johnson as well. And obviously, probably wasn't getting uh, as much delivery as he probably would have liked being the sort of stay-at-home forward that he is now. But boy, he did have an impact getting those two goals. And just the on-field coaching role, his experience. Uh, he spoke really well post-game, I understand. And despite the loss and... Uh, it's just great to have Jakana, someone like, someone like him. Great to have Jakana back, get, have him back at Jakana. Yeah, such a level head down there for the Jays. And being really impressive this season, I think. Probably some would say a sneaky chance for the league medal. But other guys like Michael Evans, Bo Names, smaller bodies but real high accumulators. Do you think the physical style of Hadfield just didn't suit them on the day? I think the physical Hadfield of uh, the style of Hadfield didn't suit anyone. We saw that's how they beat Roxburgh Park. And again, this is probably a Division One side that was playing Division Two footy this year. And uh, we, we saw that in the prelim, in the qualifying final. We saw it against Hadfield. And as I said, besides Chris Johnson and a couple others, this is a side that has an average age of 22 years old, Jakarta. So uh, the Jacker were brave and stood up. But they were, probably felt like they weren't going to be able to keep up with Hadfield physically on the day. Well, we think Jacker might be contenders next season, but Hadfield, they've been promoted. How do you think they'll go in Division 1 coming back up? Yeah, look, um, I, don't know, I don't know where they sit, having all those injuries and last year and uh, only winning those couple of games, but it's such an even competition. Is uh, Essendon for Division 1 that Hadfield should probably go OK, but look, look just let's, let, let them enjoy this, I suppose, Sprouts. Uh, they are a premiership winning team once more after 26 years and uh, they maybe they should just enjoy this one for the time being. And of course, Adam, jubilant seeds out at Windy Hill after the final siren. A, a lot of happy guys, as I mentioned. It's been such a long time since Hadfield has won a senior flag. And as you could imagine, there was quite a lot of happy players and coaches post-game. All right, Sammy Saad, mate, big day for you, mate. Six goals and uh, Hadfield, a premiership. Oh, mate, it's uh, words. I can't express the uh, the emotion that's going through at the moment. I'm just happy that all the boys are, you know, sharing it as well and the supporters and the family. Um, it's a long time coming. I, I, haven't played in, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't played in one in a while. So, um, yeah, I'm just just rap, just rap. Mate, it must be fun to, to play in a grand final and to be that far ahead. It must be fun when you know it's in the bag and you can just enjoy the rest of the game. Yeah, of course. When I mean, you know you get a few, few goals in front and then you kind of, you know, giving you a bit of banter as well. So you can take it on board and, you know, give it a bit back as well. So, yeah, no, just just happy, mate. Just, yeah, like I said, words can't describe. And I'm just happy that I'm playing if, uh, you know, two of my best mates. Um, we're known as the package down at Hatfield, so... Um, Let's bring the package in then. Come on, get the package in. There we go. Yeah, I introduce you to the package. It's Luciano Oliveri. And that's uh, my best man on my wedding, uh, Michael Curry. So, the, the package. So, yeah. Congratulations, guys. So, uh, enjoy the night. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Eddie! Raf, Raf, Raf. Uh, Playing premiership coach, mate, that must that must feel great. Oh, it's fantastic. I'm I'm speechless and I usually got a lot to say, so it's just an unbelievable feeling and um, to do it the way we did in the second half was fantastic. A magnificent year for the Hatfield Footy Club as well. Coming down, spending a year in Division 2, now you're back up in Division 1. Yeah, it's where we deserve to be in uh, Division 1, so hopefully next year we can give it a good crack and uh, be competitive and push for finals. So I think with the list we got now and a few recruits that we got in our minds, uh, we'll be pushing for finals next year. Congratulations, mate. Enjoy it.
Seven Vocali, uh, not only a premiership player, but best on ground as well. It's just a, a sweet day to be a Hatfield player. Yeah, it was a great effort for the boys today. Um, couldn't couldn't have put any any better. It was uh, absolutely wrapped to get the win. So, yeah, great. And you, and you must be wrapped. Every player wants to play well on grand final day, and you had a cracker. Yeah, well, yeah lucky. It's a few bounces went my way, and, you know, got a few touches, and that just... This is how it happened, so yeah, pretty wrapped. You kind of gave you a good run for the uh, first uh, quarter and a bit, so uh, at least in that part of the game, you're in for you're in for the fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they took it up to us in the first half, and then we were obviously in the third quarter, we were able to kick away and then held on in the last quarter. So yeah, it was a great effort by the boys. Steve Ocali, uh two medals today, best on ground. Congratulations. Thank you. Not one, but two victorious premiership coaches for the Hadfield Footy Club today. Johnny Colitis to my left and Craig Burrows to my right. Uh, Craig, you're the man on the bench. You watched it from the sideline today. It was a hot affair for at least the uh, first half, and then your boys just turned it on in the third quarter. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the first half, you kind of come out to their credit, you know, put pressure on us, made, made us make mistakes, uh, kicked a lot of points. But we were confident in our own ability that if, um, you know, we stick to our structures, the game opened up, which it, which was always going to, and we we play our style of football that will get out there on the end and, and, and win the game, which we did, which was fantastic. Johnny Clytus, you were out there, mate. Uh, pretty tough affair. Yeah, it was actually. Um, started off pretty, pretty t uh, tough slog. Everyone was, I mean, everyone was pumped up. It's a grand final, so the margin was pretty close at the start. And then pretty much like you know, after half time, we sort of steadied a bit, came out, put the score on the board at three quarter time, which Premiership quarter went away with it. And then in the end, you know, we just. Walked away with that flag. Finally, a lot of hard work in the, from the start of the year, start of November. It's finally paid off. So, pretty good. Yeah, some great performances today. Uh, Sammy Sard kicking his six as well. Vocali was uh, not only the umpire's best on ground, but ours up in the box as well for EDFL Radio. Uh, some some great individual efforts today to get you over the line. Yeah, definitely. Um, Steve Carley, he's, he's played so well for us this year. I think the, the bigger grounds suit him to a T and um, he's hard to stop. Sammy Sard, he loves a big crowd. We should have uh, a couple of thousand each game. He, he'll, uh, he'll perform, that's for sure. And finally, Johnny, uh, I know how much it meant for Hadfield to get back up into Essendon for Division 1. Uh, only the one year down in Division 2, you've come straight back up. So congratulations on that on that front. And uh, obviously, a, a real goal for the club was to get back up there. Yes, definitely. Uh, look, we're pretty much hard done by it last year. We had, everyone knows we had a lot of injuries, which made us come down to third division here. Um, yeah, we pretty much stuck to our guns, got everyone back this year. It was a hard slog. We finally got over the line, and then we'll rebuild again and go forward for next year now in Division 1. Gentlemen, congratulations. Thanks for joining us on EDFL Web TV. On Sunday, Essendon Duda Stars earned their place back in Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division with a 24-point win over Craigieburn. Here are both the Adams with all the highlights from the game as well as post-match interviews. Adam, it's a bit quiet in here at the moment. It was a different story a couple of days ago on Sunday afternoon after Essendon Duda Stars won their way back up to Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division. Well, Chief, last time these two teams met, we did have a fiery contest and we were expecting a little bit of the same on the weekend, but we didn't really get that in the end. Good to see. Good to see. Two sides that actually realise that uh, they're not going to win a flag by going the man. They were going to win the flag by going the ball. And we saw that from the very start. Mark Anderson kicked the goal within the first 10 seconds. And after that, uh, we did actually see Josh Young get involved a little bit early. We were a bit worried what would happen when Josh Young would get his first touch. And uh, luckily, it was just nothing but uh, good, clean footy. And in the end, Josh Young actually had a really, really good game. So there was a bit of niggle here and there, but uh, hardly any as much as we were expecting, which was a good result. Yeah, I think it was all in good nature. We did see Josh Young coming back and really impressive. Kicked the three goals. And if Craigie Byrne had gotten the win, I think they, he would have a strong chance for best on ground. Who were some of the other contributors for Craigie Byrne, do you think? Yeah, look, Jason Cloak uh, ended up kicking six goals. As I mentioned, Josh Young, he got three in the end, Young, but... Jason Cloak, what a warrior. I mean, uh, this guy uh, probably still doesn't have a cheekbone that's fully intact and and he's uh, been able to just almost uh, carry Craig Byrne over the line here. But uh, unfortunately, probably didn't get as much help as he would have liked. And uh, Cam Cloak, obviously, I don't think he went into the game 100%. He didn't look right from the start and obviously didn't play out the game, Adam Russell, in the end. So it was pretty much uh, Jason or bust and we know Nick Fletcher wasn't in the side. So uh, a massive effort by Jason Cloak. Uh, Josh Young was good as well. Dave Caruso did some really, really good things as well. And I liked Matty Thomas. But Essendon Duda Stars won. It was all about them in the end. Yeah, it certainly was. They were the hot favourites going in. And guys like Kate Carey, he kicked four goals. Aaron Kite, the three, the big tall targets up there. But a guy that really impressed me was Mark Anderson kicked the two goals. Obviously, you mentioned he kicked the first one of the day. But just snapping at their feet all day, kept the ball 
tight inside the Duda's forward 50 and kept the pressure up. And I think that really helped them get the win on the day. Good to see Aaron Kite as well uh, get up and win a flag. He was a uh, on the losing side two years ago on this very stage for Glen Rory against the Northern Saints. And we know he and Ronaldson and uh, Blair Cronin all played that day for Glen Roy. They famous, infamously came across Western and Duda Stars this year. But uh, yeah, they all had good games. It was good to see Kite get a nice little bag of three. Obviously, Cade Carey, what an amazing story that is. Uh, the legendary Cade Carey, in many ways, he ended up snagging four for the day. Uh, tried to get a fifth after the siren as well. I don't think anybody cared. Adam Russell, uh, the siren had gone. He'd taken a mark. Uh, really uh, milked, uh, milked out the time he spent doing his laces up and all that. Ended up missing, unfortunately, so he had to finish on four. But still, a, a magnificent way to go off into the sunset. Uh, a winning premiership play for Essendon Duda Stars with four goals to his name. Yeah, I think the celebrations had already started for Duda, so we don't blame Absolutely. him <laughs> too much for missing that goal. But Shiloh Smith was best on ground on the day, heavily backed by a lot of the people. But, yep. uh, he was the favourite going into the day and probably a favourite for the league medal. But who were the other good contributors for Duda Stars? Yeah, look, with, with Shiloh, it all just gravitates to him. I mean, he, he gets involved here and there. It's uh, the Shiloh factor. It, it is. It's the Shiloh factor. Everyone in Essendon for Division 1 knows that. And uh, that's why he's walked away with two medals on the day. Premiership captain, well done to Shiloh there. Uh, yeah, look, uh, I've already mentioned quite... Look, Tommy Allard's the one we've really got to talk about. He, he kicked three goals in the end, and they were clutch goals. They were goals in big moments. Uh, when, when you look back on the highlights reel, 10 years from now, when uh, all these players are looking back at the highlights of this particular day, Tommy Allard's going to enjoy it particularly well. Yeah, one of the favourites of Jambo, part of the commentary team on the day. Mitch Day was also really good down yes, back, just yep. contributed all day. And his work cut out for him, but I think overall he can hold his head up high. It was a good yeah, effort down back. Certainly, certainly some talk around the office that uh, maybe he was a bit stiff not to get the second middle around his neck of course the Dave McWilliam medal which he get for best on ground in the Division 1 grand final he was amazing Mitch Day and obviously having to deal with cloak times two it's uh, you're always in for a tough day but uh, I really liked some of the things that he did he read the ball quite well as well and uh, look dude it's just it was, it was a good game three quarter time we weren't even sure it was only a two was goal game difference it, it definitely was uh, I, remember, I remember Caruso kicking a goal that uh, really set things up in the final term or in the third term and look uh, dude has just found a way they I felt like they outlasted Craigie Byrne yeah That's they, right. they, Craigie Byrne running out of legs obviously guys were Guys were coming off. They had no cloak. Uh, there was a yellow card, of course, at one point as well. So they were down a man. Dudas were down a man as well. Blair Cronin did get a yellow card earlier in the game. But it was a bad time for, for Craigie Byrne to go one down. And in the end, for mine, Essendon Dudas Stars looked a bit fitter. Yeah, they really dug deep in the end, especially in that second quarter when they did have the man sent off. They almost won that passage to play, but despite being a man down. So I think that really just proved their fitness and their overall skill of Dudas. But... Craigie Byrne, they were backed heavily as the favourites at the start of the season. Where do they go to next season? Yeah, We'll see what happens. We'll see if they can uh, retain the cloaks. Uh, Peter Bugden uh, has been re-signed for another year. That was announced down at the club on Sunday night. So, uh, obviously, he'll be coaching again. So, that's good for stability. I'm not sure if you even need to add much for, for Craigie Byrne. I mean... Essendon, Essendon do to stars. They, they probably would have gone okay in Premier this year. They, with this side, they might not have been relegated like they were last year. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're quite simply superior this year. Essendon do to stars. Craigie Byrne were quite simply second best, and uh, for mine right now, are the best team in Essendon for Division One going into 2016. But uh, yeah, congratulations to Dudas. Obviously, only spent one year down in Essendon for Division One, and. Uh, they really deserve this premiership. Dean Wallace has done an amazing job with this side and uh, a lot of homework and a lot of hard work and a lot of blood, sweat and tears have gone into this. So congratulations, Essendon, due to stars on getting back up to Premier. Now, Adam, a very, very good friend of ours on EDFL Match of the Day and EDFL Preview as well, Adrian Jamison. We know he's a very, very proud Duda's man and he's been begging me to get him on EDFL Web TV and guess what he's on. We sent Jambo out post-game to have a chat with some of the winning players and coaches. Very premiership player through the Stars Football Club. How does it feel? Uh, it sounds all right, mate. I've, I've been waiting a uh, waiting a long bloody time for this. I think I've been playing senior footy for, uh, I think, 17 years. So, yeah, amazing feeling. Nice finish to the day. Four goals, was it? Three? Four, four goals, but, uh, uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was actually hurt, but um, just struggled through and the boys got the job done. 
Well, we've seen you play here many a time over the year and nothing better than seeing you back out there in the blue and gold and, and doing what you do best. Congratulations. Uh, quiet celebration? Uh, not at all. Uh, this is going to be long and hard and it's, it's well overdue, so she's on. And is that your last game of football? Definitely. Definitely my last game. Well, what a way to finish, Kate Kerry. You've been an absolute superstar. Thank you. Shiloh Smith, best on ground in the grand final for two to stars. How does it feel? Uh, it's not the best on ground, mate. It's just the flag and the cup. That, that's the, the main reason I'm here for. I think anyone today could have, could have won the best on ground for us. And coming back, Dean Wallace went and recruited you. We can see why, you know, the quality of games that we've seen you play this year. Um, how good has the journey been under Dean Wallace? Well, I come back from Div 1 to Div 2. I didn't know if I was making the right decision, leaving Deer Park, but... Couldn't have been happier right now. Love this club and I'll be here for a long time. Better things to come. Shiloh Smith, hopefully you'll have a third medal around your neck in a couple of weeks and uh, enjoy the celebrations. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. We will. Marcus Calvarezzi, Premiership player, two to stars, coming off a 21-day hamstring injury. How does it feel, mate? Oh, I mean, from last year, fighting for relegation, um, I broke my thumb and didn't get to play a part of that relegation fight. So when I did my hamstring and the potential to miss out in a grand final, uh, I wasn't going to let that happen. So I did everything right, and it's all worth it now. I mean, winning a premiership with your 22 best mates, I mean, this is it. This is why you play footy. It's awesome. Mitch Jensen, um, coming from the Bulldogs last year in a premiership to playing in a Do to Stars premiership, which one's better? Uh, no, they're both pretty good. Uh, any, any flag you win is a good flag. Some of the boys here haven't even won a flag, so it's good to win a few with all my mates. And uh, yeah. Give us something, Jensen! How good, how good was it coming back playing under Dean Wallace and, as you said, with all your mates, with all your mates here at Do the Stars? Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to win a flag with all my mates and finally done it. It feels, feels good. Aaron Ramsey, Premiership player for Do the Stars, another one that has come back to the club. Um, Dean Wallace got you back here. How does it feel today after playing in the flag? Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, obviously, they're a, uh, a great bunch of fellas um, and uh, just really happy for the group. A lot of young kids, I think. I think we've got an <coughs> average, uh, average age of 21, so it's certainly uh, promising going into Premier Division next year. Tommy Allard, uh, Premiership player for Duda Stars. How good is that, mate? Oh, it's terrific. It's an awesome step up for the boys. Obviously, going down last year wasn't too good, but it's a great win and fantastic for the club to go straight back up. So, yeah. And uh, we had you... We had you in the running for BOG at one stage with a couple of those goals. Yeah. The one you kicked up here at, um, in the third quarter, it was just amazing. Uh, just any goal in a grand final is the best feeling ever, really. It's just not, no, you can't experience it unless you actually do it. Like, all you want to do is just run to the crowd. That's all you want to do. But it was awesome and couldn't be any happier for the boys. So, yeah. All right, I'm here with Premiership coach Dean Wallace. Dean, how good is that? It doesn't get any better. Um, I played in a couple and then to be part of one to coach, it's a pretty special, special feeling knowing that we set out in October, September, October last year to plan the minute, the Ks, the talent, and then it all come together 300 days later and then hold a Premiership Cup. It's uh, a great feeling. And you talked about preparation and the journey you've taken them on. You played quarter by quarter. I know there was something up at the club rooms with quarters won and quarters lost and it was the final 120 minutes today. They stood up didn't they? I think our preparation has been our key and that's something I've learned over my journey. It's, it's how you prepare and there's no magic formula and it gets back to hard work and we've worked extremely hard and um, I tried to break it down into uh, the old cliches of you know inch by inch and quarter by quarter and you know contest by contest but that's how we measured it we measured each game for individual games and I'm not giving away any secrets because it's been done before and that's what coaches do and um, I just try to keep them focused in 30 minute blocks instead of 120 minute blocks and there's no science behind that or rocket science behind that it's just a way of breaking the game down. And um, before the game with Fletcher not playing, were you expecting him not to be lining up today? Um, oh, we watched the game last week and he was obviously a bit sore. <clears throat> we did a bit of homework into him in the past and found a way to stop him. 
he's a pretty important player to them. Uh, between him and the Cloaks, they sort of kick 70 odd percent of their goals. So yeah, having him out sort of helped. And the couple of goals from Tommy Allard, Kay Carey standing up in, I do believe, his final game of football. Um, it was, it's just an all-round effort with what you had on the park. You were able to swing Ronaldson back or forward, Jed Clothier playing different roles. It was just important having the spread of players that can go back and forth. And that's how we built the side from day one when we sat down as a... With the gutsy runner. Sat down as a, a list manager. The old Lambers over there was part of it in September last year. It wasn't about who or how. Um, we, we, had to, we had to find a way and... Um, we had 29 goal kickers in the three, t in the three times that we played Craigieburn. So who do they stop? Do they stop Kite? Do they stop Cade? Do they stop Brown? Do they stop Ronaldson? Do they stop Shiloh? It's, it's weaponry in your armoury type thing. Is it? Yeah. It's, I reckon that's the sign of a good side where you can have players go through the middle, you can have players go forward. And we've got the ability to play forward and back. And, I was just saying there earlier, the average age of our list, if you take out the three or four old, old bulls that probably will retire, um, it's 21. So it's an exciting time for Duders. And, and your forward scout video analysis guy also did a pretty good job during the week, I hear. He's sacked. Jamo, you're sacked. Right. <laughs> Dave Wallace, thank you. We're two grand finals down with one to go right here at Windy Hill on Saturday. Greenvale's win over Keelor earned them a place against the undefeated Aberfeldy. Now let's throw to Adam Russell and Adam Sarakoglu before the Chief previews the big one with an old friend. A massive win for Greenvale on the weekend against Keelor at Coburg City Oval, Adam Russell. And you and I both tipped Keelor for this one, probably because Greenvale only kicked three goals the week before at the very same venue when we both saw Keelor play pretty well against Pascoe Vale. Why the turnaround? Yeah, Kiel were the form team going into this match, but Greenvale were really just too good on the day. From all reports, they just outbodied the uh, Blues midfielders in the middle, and that was the story of the day. Nick Parfenopoulos, he was really good. He kicked five goals. Nick Marrick kicked three. Just on Greenvale, a couple of team selections. Essendon and VFL might get a couple of players back from there. Yeah, Thompson and Muller are main two, so uh, selection is going to be very interesting from Greenvale, of course, we're expecting at least one change from Aberfeldy. Of course, Reese Moreland, who uh, uh, was so devastated, was devastated to hear that uh, he did break his leg in the qualifying final. So there will be at least one change for Aberfeldy, and it's obviously going to be a massive game. These will be the rooms uh, occupied by Aberfeldy on the weekend. Adam Russell, uh, will they be celebrating a flag or commiserating yet another loss? I think they'll get the win, Chief, in overtime, just to be what in overtime. Okay. It'll be a draw at full time, but Aberfeldy, they'll go on and get the win. Tip two from two last week at the best on grounds. Steve Vicali and Shiloh Smith. So Luke Blackwell, just look out. You might be getting the medal around your neck because you're my tip for this best on ground in the grand final. You are two for two so far, Adam Russell. You did correctly tip uh, Vocali and Shiloh Smith last week. So uh, Luke Blackwell, uh, you're probably a good chance to get it if this man is uh, suggesting that you're already over the line there. It is going to be a massive game. It's grand final week, a lot of excitement around the EDFL. And because of that, I decided to preview the big one with an old friend of mine. Not far away now from the big one, it's Aberfeldy taking on Green Vale in the Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division grand final. Matt Pilios, it's been too long on EDFL Web TV since we've seen you last. It's great to be back and hello to all the EDFL viewers out there. Uh, very happy to get the invitation. Uh, two years, I think it's been since uh, yep. Agoonzi on EDFL TV, but an amazing show you've had uh, in 2015, Adam, and I'm that excited about the uh, the big Premier Division grand final between the undefeated Aberfeldy Footy Club, which I've got a very, very soft spot for, and the mighty Greenvale Footy Club, which I've got a lot of friends uh, there as well. It's going to be unbelievable. Sorry I was late, mate. Really busy week down at headquarters, as you can imagine, but uh, you did mention the big one, of course, Aberfeldy and Greenvale. A lot of people around the traps, Matty, they're pretty much uh, already giving this little baby right here to Aberfeldy, but uh, some others want to make a case for Greenvale. Can you make a case for Greenvale, who go into this grand final, a fairly heavy underdog? Yeah, um, rightly so I can for Aberfeldy for, for them being uh, you know, tipped as unbeatable. But Greenvale Footy Club, you know what? Uh, they won back-to-back -back flabs in 2012 and 2013. And they've got guys who uh, have won at Windy Hill. I know Abba's, uh, Adam have those guys who with AFL and VFL experience who have won at higher levels. But, you know, I think in the minds of guys like Brewer and, and James Rowan and Matt Smith and, 
and, and Joey Gazzo, who I saw doing hill sprints a couple of months back down in Santorini, all the way in Greece. But uh, good to see him back. But and Burns and Clifton, these guys can can pass on to the guys. Uh, you know, the Greenville, um, Greenville have defeated Aberfeldy when Aberfeldy were favourite. Um, you know, it's a different day on Grand Final day. I think that year in 2013, Greenvale came off a, a huge loss in the second semi final and, and got the chocolates in the Grand Final. So yeah, you know what? I think there's that slight bit of belief, but this Aberfeldy side to me is one of the greatest sides I've, been, I've seen on paper and uh, on, a, on a field. Yeah, just just on the Jets, uh, a lot of big names as we know, but some new names as well. We saw Parthenopoulos kick uh, a nice bag on the weekend and that turnaround though from that first game against Aberfeldy two weeks ago was a massive one. They only kicked three goals that day at a very wet Coburg City Oval, lost by 50 points to Abbers. Then they turned it around against an informer hot kill or side that all of a sudden has figured out how to score. We know they're very good defensively under Mick McGuan, but now they can attack as well. And Greenvale turned it around really, really well. So so as the question is, Matty, are you worried about what happened two weeks ago at Coburg because Greenvale didn't get close to Abbers that day? Yeah, mentally that's going to hurt them. I think it was 10-14 uh, to 3-6. I mean, nine scoring shots is pretty bad. I know last week they've done the flip side and got 18-16, but yeah, I think they'd be very worried. Um, it was such a dominating win. Um, and you know what, Greenvale are going to have that in the back of their mind. If Abbas get to a good start, you know, it could put some doubt in a lot of the Greenvale footballers for sure. Two familiar sides on grand final day, Matty. We're used to seeing some black and green and a couple of shades of blue out at Windy Hill on grand final day, but yeah. two new coaches. Adam Potter has not lost as Aberfeldy coach. That's, that's an amazing fact. He's 19-0. Uh, and obviously Shannon Grant's come in at Greenvale as well. Can we expect much in the coaching matchup in this one? You know what, both guys with such high experience. Uh, Shagger, an ex-business partner of mine, an ex-AFL coach yeah. and a VFL coach for such a yep. long time. And, as was Adam, yep. And, and Adam yep. as well, uh, who's an ex-EDFL boy who's you know been there. So look, um, you know what, both guys will be nervous, I think, quietly. Uh, Potsy's just such a well-organised man. Where, where Sh- Shagger's really... Uh, he's, he's organised his instruction. He's, he's, he's done a lot of stuff on talent and instinct as well. So it's going to be a great matchup off the field as well as on the field. And I wish both guys, uh, two of both great guys, best of luck. I'm not letting you get away, Matt, without a tip. We need a tip from Matt Pilios. Who's going to win the grand final? How much by and why? Uh, to me, Aberfeldy Footy Club have uh, really planned this. Sometimes you've got to lose a grand final or maybe two. To, to win one, and, and this year is definitely, to me, the, the year of Aberfeldy Football Club. Uh, they're just so strong across the board. Uh, I think I had a conversation with Shannon Grant three or four weeks ago, and he said to me, Matt, I, I reckon they could be top six in the VFL, just about. Yeah, I agree know, with that. Yeah. You know what, yeah. you have a look at them, and they're just such a strong side. They play for the jumper. Uh, there's a lot of guys. I mean, even the guys from a recruits point of view, McLean and, and Kefford were juniors there. Um, you know, the guys like Cabello and Patak and, and across the board have, uh, have been there for so long. Uh, three or four years. There's a lot of juniors in the side as well. They are just too strong across the board in, in every facet. Uh, and I think their midfield goes seven or eight deep. But to a guy like Mark Lynch, who's won comps in Northern League and our league, and, and can't even uh, get, get a start in the ball. So it's going to be an amazing game. But Aberfeldy, just across the board, to me, will go down as one of the strongest local football sides in, in history come Saturday night. They need to win this, though, if they want that status. Yeah, for sure. About 30 points. Uh, you mentioned Mark Lynch in there. He's my tip for best on ground, the Red Rose medal. It's obviously a massive honour. You can walk away from grand final day being the best on ground. For You're sure. feeling pretty good about yourself. I'm tipping Mark Lynch to walk away with that particular prize. Who do you think is going to walk away with the Red Rose medal? That's a good tip, Adam. I reckon he was their top two last year uh, for Aberfeldy Lynchy, but I'm going to go for my man, Joshy Cabillo. Uh, special bloke. Um, loves Aberfeldy Football Club. Hard as nails. And you know what? He was overseas uh, at late last year, the start of this year. And let me tell you, all he had on his mind other than the great uh, tour with his lovely missus was uh, a, f- a flag for 2015. And that, that commitment, he was training over there. I reckon a big game for Joshy Gavillo. It's going to be a massive day. It always is at Windsor Hill to Strathmore Community Bank Premier Division Grand Final. We've got the replay of the 2013 decider, which was only a couple of kicks that day, Matty, in 2013. We'll see if Abbas can finally turn it around or the Jets just... Uh, collect another one of these which have become pretty good at over the years yeah it's going to be uh, I know Greenville is such a, a great football club and both clubs too the only EDFL clubs with the big screens as well this year that all the fans yes. have got to uh, enjoy yes. as well so it's a bit the of a battle the, the match day experience Matty it's, it's important Get down to Windy Hill. It's going to be a good one there on Saturday as well. You've got both uh, presidents as well, John Larkers and Bruce Kent, both very highly regarded presidents. You've got to wish them both the best, but both very good legal practitioners in uh, the Melbourne uh, industry. 
as well. So uh, you got to wish both clubs very strong, but uh, Aberfeldy for me, mate. It's going to be an unbelievable day. 10,000, I reckon, to it, Windy Hill, Adam. We're hoping so. We've ordered enough records to make sure there are, there are enough there, Matty. But uh, it's going to it's going to be great. Obviously, no matter what happens, even if it's a blowout, it's going to be a great story either way. Whoever wins, uh, we're obviously always hoping for a close one, Matty, yep. as the neutral supporter. But uh, I'm just looking forward to 5 p.m. I reckon it's going to be a, a great story to tell. Whoever wins this particular cup right yeah. here. Don't you know what? Would not surprise me Saturday night if Greenville got the chocolates, but Aberfeldy are just one of the great local football sides and uh, I think they're going to get that. As I said off the top, Matty, uh, it's great to have you back on EDFL Web TV. It wouldn't be grand final week without hearing from your great self and again, sorry I was late today. It's, it's quite uh, hectic down at headquarters as we speak. You're the busiest man and that's why Mark's for you reckons that... Uh, your uh, a pay rise is coming up very soon, Adam. So I've said that on camera, Mark. Absolutely no pressure. But an absolute privilege to be here at part of EDFL Premier Week. I live and breathe the Eastern District Footy League and uh, hold the competition very close to my heart. Thank you for asking me, Adam. And thank you for making me wait, mate. See you on Saturday, Matt. That's it for this edition of EDFL Web TV. We're looking forward to seeing a massive crowd here at Windy Hill on Saturday for the Premier Division Grand Final. Make sure to pick up your copy of the record free with entry to the ground. We hope you have an excellent time and we'll see you back here for another edition of EDFL Web TV to wrap up the game and also look forward to the League Medal Night coming up later this month.